Ken Bostrom Ministries. Beginning January 2018, Ken Bostrom Ministries engaged in a whole new assignment by entering the airwaves of the world. Don't miss Ken and Mary Bostrom Ministries Live. Hello everyone. We're so glad you're with us today at United Purpose Broadcast. I'm Dr. Ken Bostrom along with my friend today, Pastor Robert Anderson. Robert, it's so good to have you with us today. Good to be here, an honor. Uh, Robert is from Deer Park and and uh, we're going to have just a good old time here on this program. And uh, Pastor Robert's going to be sharing his testimony today, and I'm excited about that. Also, I want to mention that on the next program, this is the first program we're going to do, okay. and then uh, the next program, uh, your wife, Deanne, and my wife, Mary, are going to uh, do an interview together. So yeah. that's going to be pretty exciting, I think. Yeah. And then the third program, we're all four coming together, and uh, you're going to have a little teaching for us. Yeah. and. And uh, it's going to be very encouraging. And that's what we want to do is encourage you in the things of God because Amen. God loves you so much. You know, um, the Bible talks about new birth. It talks about uh, born from above. And in, and in John chapter 3, it says it talks about being born again. Amen. So many people don't understand that term, but that's what we use as we call ourselves born again Christians. And, yes. and I want to share, and I, I love the spirit-filled Bible. I'm a Bible guy. I love the Bible. And uh, in here, uh, the Spirit-Filled Bible, it talks about, it gives us some wisdom here. It talks about the new birth, and it says, it's the message of the kingdom. And it says here, it says, uh, and if you have your Spirit-Filled Bible, you can go to page 1512 and follow along with me if you want to. But it says, on, upon repentance, and repentance is extremely important when it comes to becoming born again. Upon repentance, a new order of life opens to the believer in Jesus Christ. I love that. Opens a new life. Yes. And that's what we're going to see with you today. You're going to talk, us, talk to us mm -hmm. about where you were and where you are you know, today. So Amen. that's going to be pretty exciting. Jesus used the figure of new birth to dramatically indicate three things. Number one, without the new birth, there is no life and no relationship with God. Yes. You know, chapter 5 says, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Amen. Number two, in the new birth, new perspective comes. You see things all different when you get born yeah, again. Everything changes. Your countenance changes. <laughs> everything changes. I love this. Yes. There's new life, a new relationship with God. Uh, number two, in the new birth, new perspective comes. Okay, as we see the kingdom of God... God's word becomes clear and the Holy Spirit works and wonders are believed and experienced. Faith is alive. Yes. I love it. Faith is alive. Amen. Faith is something we need today. And today is all the we things that are do. going on. Faith is yes. something we really, really need. Number three, through the new birth, we are introduced, literally we enter into a new realm where God's new kingdom order can be realized. New birth is more than simply being saved. Simply say, well, I'm just yes. saved, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But listen to what this says. It is a requalifying experience opening up the possibilities of our whole being to the supernatural dimension mm -hmm. of life and fitting us for the beginning of God's kingdom order. Requalifying an experience. It, when you have, you know, born again, it's hard to really uh, ex explain it. You have to experience There's it. There's so much to it, yes. You've There's so to, much to it. Uh, when you repent of the, the sins of your life and uh -huh. God just changes everything in you. Yeah. You know, Ken, when I think yeah. of the new birth, uh, I think of a, you're, you're like a, a new baby and a baby has no past. It's, it's a new baby, Boy, a new that birth. Is good. Yeah. And all of your past is, is gone <laughs> yeah. and you're stepping into this whole new life where you're discovering new things and you're thinking differently and, and you're learning to speak a whole new language, as oh, it were, right. because you're, you're a new creature in Christ yeah. Jesus. And, and uh, the new birth is just so amazing and wonderful. It is. Yeah. It's precious. It's precious. Yeah. I mean, it happened to me 38 years ago and uh, 38 years. when yeah. I gave my life to the Lord. And you know, I've never fallen back in 38 years. I've followed the Lord all these 38 years. Amen. You know, and there's trials, there's tribulations, there's things you go through, but 
it's a much yeah. better life knowing the Lord than the, not to have Amen. it. So Amen. right now, Pastor Robert, uh, give us a little, give us your testimony. Tell us when things, where you were and where you <laughs> are today. Well, first of all, Brother Ken, I just want to thank you and Mary for having my wife Deanne and I here with both of you today. It's our pleasure. We honor you. We Amen. treasure the relationship that we have with you. Amen. And it's just growing together. Amen. That's what Amen. makes it so exciting and, I love and it. so a treasure to be here. But uh, I just thank the Lord for my testimony. We all have a special testimony. If mm. we've been born again, yeah. we all have a testimony of yeah. God's goodness. But my testimony goes back a long way. I have such a spiritual legacy in my family. My grandfather was the pastor of a Pentecostal church. Wow. First in Mullen, Texas, and then Brownwood, Texas. And when I was a, a, a little boy, around 9 or 10, I would go spend summertime with uh, my grandfather and my grandmother. Uh, they were Ray Anderson and Dorothy Anderson. And Ray was a carpenter. And uh, his name was Robert Ray. My name is Robert Anderson. And mm -hmm. when I would spend time with them in the summer, Ray would build the church. He, he built the altar. Uh, he built the steps. He, he shingled the building. He literally built the church that the people gathered up in. And so I would help him as best I could mm -hmm. uh, growing up there. But when I would go, not only was there a, a building going on physically, but I didn't realize that God was building something in me as a young man. Yeah. And so uh, when we would spend summers there, uh, my family, sometimes they'd come back home and leave, leave me there. I'm not sure if they did that <laughs> on purpose <laughs> or what. Not. But uh, as a young man, uh, I experienced the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit as a young man. And I didn't realize the treasure of it when I was young and experiencing all that. And I remember my grandmother, she would get up and prophesy in church. And, and you know, they were older. Mm. I remember one time she was prophesying and her false teeth came out. And oh, she, she, I, just, she just took her false teeth out and kept prophesying, kept you know. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But uh, I got to see the moves of God at that time. And, but coming back home, I, I, I was 11 years old. And uh, my uncle was also a pastor in Lomax, Texas. Mm. And my family got up and we went to a special service they were having in Lomax, Texas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was 1973, yes. And uh, when we went, uh, they had a special contemporary Christian music group there called the Hope of Glory. You may remember them, but uh, the Hope of Glory was there and they, they ministered in music and they began to share their testimonies. and. And as an 11-year-old, uh, I remember listening to what was being said. And there was a young lady that got up, and she ran over to her mama in the service. And uh, she stood her mama up, and she said, Mama, I love you. Do you hear me, Mama? I love you. And both of them just broke in the power of God. And, wow. and you could tell there was a reconciliation, and the move of the Spirit of God was happening. And I tell you, when that took place... Wow. God just came in that room. I just feel his presence now. Yeah, yeah, and uh, wow. teenagers and young mm. people, they just began to come to the Lord. And, and there was an altar call that, that happened at that moment. And just hundreds of young people came to the front. I went to the front. And I'll tell you what, I was born again on that night. And, and I'll never forget it. Yes, I grew up in the church. But there's something about being born again and experiencing and knowing that I'm a new creature in Christ and now Jesus lives inside of me. Just because you go to church yes. doesn't make you a Christian. That's right. <laughs> I mean, you have to have a, a new birth, a born again experience. Yes. You really, that's what you have to do, which, yeah. which begins with re repentance. Yes. Actually, yeah. it can be a difficult situation for those of us that, that do yeah. grow up in church because we think we're okay. Right. But it's not about religion, right. it's about relationship. Yeah. And so it was at that point where my life just began to turn around. And, and so uh, I was born again that night, but then again I would go to Brownwood, Texas and, and be in church with my, my grandfather and others in my family, my uncles, my aunts, cousins went to the church. It was called Trinity Tabernacle. And uh, it was there that I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I remember going down to the altar, and uh, boy, they would play their, their music, and the Spirit of God would come in, and, and uh, my life was turned around because I had seen it, but I had not experienced it. Mm -hmm. And so as a young teenager, I was filled with the so Spirit. So we're talking, uh, uh, you gave your life to the Lord at, at 11 years old? About 11 years old. And uh -huh. then you received the Holy Spirit. Now what we're talking about here is the, mm -hmm. the baptism of the Holy Spirit yes. with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Yes. 
Okay, right. so they're, they're kind of two different experiences. Yes, they are. Right? Yes. And, uh, but you experienced both of those at that young age? At 11 years old, born again, and then uh, just a few years later, I was Three about 14, 15, uh, is when I uh, was filled with the Holy Spirit and power. And the supernatural, mm. tangible presence of God became so real to my life. Yeah. And uh, was was in deal with power. And at 15 years old, you have a certain understanding. But I didn't realize that God was preparing me for such a time as this right now. Yeah, so He does that. He, yeah. He calls you at a young age, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, God's got, I look at it as in Jeremiah 29, 11. God has a plan and a purpose for everybody. Yes. Not of evil, yeah. but of good. Good plan. He's got hope. Uh -huh. He's got future for you. Some people, uh, you know, when you're young, you know, what am I going to do? Or, or even when you graduate from school, mm -hmm. from high school, mm -hmm. what am I going to do? Or graduate from college, you know, what am I going to do? You know, God's got a call on everybody's life to do something. Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, he's called you to do something, Robert. Yes. What's um, that? We're pastors of Living Water Church in Deer Park, Texas. And we knew a long time ago, I did, that the Lord had called me to pastor. And I knew one day the Lord was going to open the way, and he surely did. We've been pastors in Living Water now for about five and a half years Praise God. in Deer Park, Texas, and we just really love but it. But it didn't yeah. start there. Where you know you uh, you raised you know young, mm -hmm. and then uh, what happened? Uh, were you going to a different church? You mentioned something about you were affiliated with uh, John uh, Osteen yes, uh -huh. at one time in your life. Tell us about that. A little bit. Well, after I was filled with the Spirit, um, it was during this time that Deanne and I we met in school in the sixth grade. Oh and, uh, my yes. oh, uh, <laughs> what they call that uh, high school or high sweetheart? Really, yeah, this was jun <laughs> junior, junior high Teach sweetheart. Junior high, yeah. junior high school sweetheart, that's amazing. And uh, we, we kind of liked each other on and off, but uh, then after that, we uh, in high school, we decided to like each other at the same time. Wow. And uh, we started dating at, at the 10th grade together. And wow. it was at that time that the Lord was moving in her life and the Lord was moving in our life. And uh, we were introduced to Lakewood Church as teenagers when we were going to high school with wow. Pastor John Osteen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so a group of us teenagers would get together and we'd get in the car because we heard the Spirit of God was moving in this place and God was doing miracles and mm -hmm. mighty things were happening. And so we would, uh, part of our dating was going to church. And wow. uh, we went to Lakewood Church and, and so all through our high school years we were there and uh, God would just begin to pour his word into us and we begin to grow in the Lord. And so it was an adventure together with Pastor John Osteen and all the guests that came there. Yeah, yeah. but you also got into the music ministry there. Is that, is that right? And what did you yes. do there? Well, I was the drummer at Lakewood Church and the Lakewood Orchestra. You were the Orchestra. drummer at Lakewood Church. I was the drummer okay. at Lakewood Church. You know, I was telling yeah. Pastor Robert, I, you know, we're from Minnesota originally and my wife and I uh, on Sunday evenings, I think it was 1030 on CBN, uh, they, they would, the John, John Osteen would come on the church and uh, we would listen to that. We'd be, be so inspired, you know. Oh, uh, yes. You know, go to Acts 1 8, you know, the power <laughs> of the Holy Ghost. It's you know, a powerful you man of God. Receive that power, you know, and stuff. And he just yeah. gets you so excited. But yes. you were the drummer of, of, of that. Yes, I was. Of, at uh, the time, probably when we were doing that, it was a number of years ago. But uh, Well, it was, it was at that same time. Uh, the Lord moved on us and Deanne as well to begin a music ministry ourselves. Okay. And so we started a music ministry called Destiny. And uh, we That's had cool. uh, yeah. at different times four or five uh, members. And we uh, traveled South Texas <clears throat> and Central Texas ministering wow. to youth groups, playing in churches. We wow. wrote our own music. And, and uh, just we were in ministry uh, throughout Anybody remember uh, high him school doing and that? after that. Yeah. <laughs> My hair used to be a lot longer. It's still a little <laughs> wild, but uh, yeah. anyway, we uh, we just loved uh, being in ministry. And at the time, I thought that was all we were going to be doing because we just loved going and seeing God move through music and ministry. And and so we were in Destiny Ministries for 11 years. Wow. At the same time, we were going to Lakewood Church, and so we were real involved in, in ministry mm -hmm. through that time. Yeah, Pastor Rob, I'm going to drop back when you were 11 years old. Yes. Mm -hmm in your born again experience, what actually took place? Do you remember, I mean, you, you said some things there, but what, what, did, what else did you really experience at, the, at age 11? Or, yeah, 11, yeah. At age 11, when I was uh, in that service there in Lomax, Texas, I realized that my condition in the moment needed to change. 
even though I had grown up in church, I needed to come before the Lord and ask the Lord to forgive me. We use a word today, repentance, but there had to be a turning in how I thought and my will needed to be his will. And so we, I went to the altar that night and I, I remember we dropped on our knees and in that moment, um, I happened to, to just begin to cry. You, you don't have to cry to be born again, but it's a moment of humility and asking God to forgive us of our sins. And there was a shifting. There was a turning, Ken. And this is all good. In that this moment. is all inside. This, is, was, this isn't up here. Yes, it was from this my is, heart. It's down yeah. in the heart. That, yeah. that, that there's a pulling. The Lord's pulling. Oh, pulling without a you doubt. In. Yeah. And, uh, as you know, it's like, you know, we've heard the term slaying in the spirit. People yeah. fall over, you know. Mm -hmm. I've heard people say, oh, you know, I'm not going to fall over. I'm not going to fall over. <laughs> but when the power of God, the presence of God, the power yeah. of God comes on it, on a person, yeah. you, just, you just lose it. I mean, you just the power Amen. is so strong, you can't stand in the presence of God. Yeah, and that's why oftentimes our emotions are a part of that salvation oh, yeah. experience. Yeah. Yeah. We're all different in our emotions, but see, we're speaking from our innermost being. We're crying out to God from, from our heart. Exactly. And so our, yeah. it's, it's tangible, it's real, and, and uh, I just, I, I felt and knew that God had forgiven me and that I had in that moment become one of His now. I became a son of the living God. I had a new identity because yeah. I became born again. Yeah. And uh, then after uh, I repented, I asked mm -hmm. Jesus to come into my heart, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. be my Savior. Amen. I believe that He was risen from the dead, which is what we're celebrating right, right now, now this very season. Yeah. I knew mm -hmm. my God was alive because I felt him alive in me. And that's mm -hmm. part of the new birth. There's a new life, resurrection life. The spirit of God comes and yeah. dwells on the inside of us and it changes us from the inside to the outside. And it's a process, but yeah. in that moment, we become sons and daughters of God. And you've served yeah. the Lord all this yeah. time. You haven't uh, used this, Use the term backslide, you know, walked away from the Lord or anything like that? Well, as, as, a teen, as 11 years old and then going through teenage life, yes, I will admit there were some mistakes yeah. made. Yeah. But, uh, but I never backslid to the point to where I got away from God because right. there was a reverential fear of the Lord. Yeah. And that's kind of missing today. But yeah, whenever right. I started getting off track or doing something I shouldn't, I felt a, an, an inward, not a condemnation. The Lord doesn't condemn, That's but right. as a loving father, he convicts us and says, son, daughter, you're getting off track here, and it's not good for you. Right. You need to get back on That's track. Good. And it was the spirit of God yeah. in line with the word of God that, that helped both my wife and I, because we were dating through high school, mm -hmm. get back on track. And so I thank God for his grace and his goodness to cover us, you know, Praise through God. those turbulent times. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. That is so powerful. Yeah. All right. Let me, let's uh, talk about... The baptism of the Holy Spirit. You okay. bet, yeah. Uh, at age 14, uh -huh. you got baptized uh, in the Holy Spirit and you began to speak in this other language. Spoken tongues, okay. yeah. And, and it talks mm -hmm. about that in the book of Acts. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what people say, well, that's of yesterday. It's not of today or whatever, but mm -hmm. it's in the New Testament. It's in, in the book of Acts. Yes. And uh, uh, so what kind of, uh, you know, I've heard people say, what does it sound like? What do you, what do you, what come out of your mouth? <laughs> what, did, what did you get when you, did, you know, when I did it, it was kind of like uh -huh. a baby talk. I mean, it was like really yeah. strange. And uh -huh. here I am, this intelligent man, you know, and here I'm right. talking like a, like a child or a uh -huh. language I don't understand. Yeah. How, what kind of experience did you have? With you? Well, first of all, one key, Ken, is when I was saved, the first step that happened was a step of humility before okay. the Lord. Mm -hmm. Humility opens up the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Humility is a key that opens the kingdom. And so when we come to God for salvation, we start with humility. And you know what? The same thing happens when we're baptized in the Spirit. It's very difficult to receive anything from God, but especially the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, the Spirit literally dunks us in His presence and from out of our innermost being, not our head, but our innermost right. being, uh, it's like a fountain welling up and out comes a language that we do not understand. In order for all that to take place, pride has to leave. Isn't that And the so truth? Yeah. That, wow. that night at my grandfather's church, uh, when I went to the front, for me, 
I just knelt down at the altar. And I was, I was there for a while. Sometimes you receive the baptism in 30 seconds. At other times, it may take a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Some people mm -hmm. seek it for a while. Others, it, it happens quickly. So there's no particular way that it comes. But one key is humility and mm -hmm. crying out to God. Hunger. Mm -hmm. Thirst. Yeah. You know, they that thirst, they that hunger. That's what opens up the kingdom of heaven because pride's out of the way. And yeah. you've, you've got to come to the place where you are yielding to the Spirit of God. Yeah. You're right. yielding to what the Lord wants to do. And you're not tightening up and trying to, to remain in control. No, you trust the Lord and His Spirit. That Lord Jesus, you yeah. want to fill me with your Spirit. Mm -hmm. You want me to know you in a tangible way right. that, like I never had before. And so when I was kneeling there just worshiping the Lord, they, they were playing music and, and I was uh, crying out to the Lord and I just began worshiping him. Mm -hmm. I began letting him know how much I loved him. And, and as I began doing that, I, 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 I began to just be taken over by a presence from the inside yeah. out. Yeah. And that's when I began to speak in another language. And it was strange. And I, <laughs> you do feel like a, a, a baby, as it yeah. were, because you're not so, sure, yeah. but you still yield by faith. And as I began to speak in that language, the presence of God just came in yes, such a tangible yes, way. Yes. And uh, I would say it was like I was drunk in the love of God. Yeah. I was just yeah. drunk in the love of God. Yeah. And, it, and it changed me because it was no longer just believing in God. I knew that God believed in me and he touched me through the baptism of the Spirit that night. Powerful, and since yeah. then, I've had that language and I love just praying in the, what we call praying in the Holy Spirit all the time. I don't yeah. always know what I'm praying, but that's okay. The Spirit of God within me does. Right. And that resurrection power a lot of times is praying on behalf of someone else mm -hmm. or praying the will of God to be released in some way. And it's such a treasure to know that we can be used of God yeah. by the Spirit to pray His will and not ours. And that's Amen. the exciting part of praying in, in tongues and in the Spirit. You know, I've, I've, yeah. when I minister of church, I've had people come up and say, I've tried so hard to get baptism mm -hmm. in the Holy Spirit. I've tried so hard. But I've asked God, you know, fill me. I've done this for years. I, w I was yeah. in, a, in a town where I was working one time, and, mm -hmm. and these people, they were Presbyterians, and they were trying to get filled with the Spirit for 30 years. 30 years. 30 years, wow. And uh, yeah. this, this director of this place said, come to me and said, well, if I call him up and have them come down here, could you lead him to the, uh, baptize the Holy Spirit? And I said, bring him down. They yeah. came down there, and I began to share uh, in Acts and Corinthians and all these things. But I didn't hardly get into a whole lot of things. And, and within, I mean, within seconds, wow. both of them just, oh, no, no, about it, about it. They, this language came yeah. out of them. Yeah. 30 years they've been trying to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Wow. Listen, yeah. folks, it's not hard. It's very easy. It's just a yeah. surrender, Amen. a repentance, surrender. it's humility. Just say, God, I want this so bad. I know yes. I'm, and just ask him. Yeah. Ask, seek, not he'll open the door. And you'll have an experience like you've never had before. Yes. But you must be born again prior to do this. That's the first. And uh, yeah. so I'm going to have Pastor Robert. I want him to pray for you right mm -hmm. now uh, for salvation and, and an opportunity to get uh, baptized in the Holy Ghost. I mean, you might be sitting in your living room, wherever you are. Just, just let the Holy Spirit come and open up and be a blessing to you. So would you go ahead and just do that right now? Just pray for them. Amen. First, uh, I want to say that Ken and I, we love you, Amen. and we're, we're here being called of Amen. God to minister His love Amen. and His word to you. Amen. I believe there are no accidents, Amen. and Thank by you Jesus. hearing our voice right now, it's a divine Amen. appointment of God. Amen. He's reaching out to you in your life. He knows every detail, and He wants to reveal more of Himself to you. And Amen. as you give your life to the Lord and ask Him to be your Savior, you become his son and his daughter, adopted oh, like into his kingdom. Like yeah. And so if Amen. you had never Amen. been born again, Hallelujah. and you'd say, Pastor Robert, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm born again, I'm not sure if I'm saved, but I wanna be sure. Mm. I wanna know that, that Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and I wanna Amen. experience these things and know these Amen. things that I'm hearing today. You can do that right now. And so I'm gonna ask you to pray with me and repeat after me Amen. right now. Amen. You may want to get on your knees or just get into a place of Amen. surrender if you can. Amen. If you can't, oh, then your heart can bow. Thank your heart can bow. Yeah. All yeah. right. Here thank we go. You, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For this moment. For this moment. 
I believe, I believe that you are calling me. That you're calling me to give my life. To give my life to you. To you. And so right now. And so right now. I ask you, Lord. I ask you, Lord. To forgive me. To forgive me. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. I repent. I repent. I turn away. I turn away from my old way of living. From my old way of living. Lord, my will. Lord, my will is now. Your will. My will is not I your will. I want your will, God. I want your will, God. To lead me. To lead and me. And to guide me. And to guide the me. The rest of my days. The rest of my days. I ask you, Jesus. I ask you, Jesus. To come and live. To come and live. Inside my heart. Inside my heart. I want to be born again. I want to be born again. By the Spirit. By the Spirit. I believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. You died on the cross you for me. You died on the cross for me. You took my sin. You took my sin. You took my judgment. You took my judgment. And in exchange. In exchange. You gave me life. You gave me life. New life. New life. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. To where I can become. Where I can become. A child of God. A child of God. And so I accept, Lord. And so I accept, Lord. Your finished work on the cross. Your finished work on the cross. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. And I declare right and now. And I declare right now. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm born again. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. And I belong to you. And I belong to forever you. Forever. And ever, and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise Dear God. Lord. Thank yes, you, and, and if mm. you just uh, just open your heart to the Lord and uh, just ask Him to fill you with His Spirit and out of your innermost being, you'll hear some, it'll come right out of your innermost being. Yes. And, and you'll be, just, just do it. It's going to happen. Amen. Amen. Thank Even you, if it Lord. didn't happen right now, it's going to happen. So, Father, we thank you, thank Lord, you, Lord, today for everybody that's tuned in. God bless them. Thank you, uh, make sure you go to KenBosterMinistries.org. We'd love to hear from you. And you be a blessing. You, Amen. We love Amen. you. We'll see you next time on this you. program. God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is Ken and Mary Bostrom. We thank you for joining us today. We welcome you to watch us on KBNTV.tv, YouTube, Facebook, mbostrom2.com. Also listen to us on WRNO Shortwave Radio. Contact us at KenBostromMinistries.org. God bless you today.